my gosh. Can you remember the days when um, computers were these big, giant, rectangular boxes that you kind of had to, like, like use a forklift tra truck to, to travel with? All right? Do you remember those days, Hugo? Mm -hmm. Captain Hugo. Nafisha, you remember totally, those days? Totally, totally. Uh, yeah, the thing, <laughs> yeah, you need a forklift truck just to like to move the speaker, you know. But uh, oh yes, yes, <laughs> good times. <laughs> Those are the days, man. Those are the days, you know, when it wasn't so much men men mental health issues, you know, because life was more, you know, normal. There wasn't no radio waves flowing through the streets, so we can call on our phones. Uh, but maybe, <laughs> you know, but things were different. Things were simple. I don't know. But anyway, I, I, I'm speaking like an old person. Forget that. Burn that. Yeah, you are. You are showing your age, bro. <laughs> Forgive me. All right. So just before the time out, Nafisha, you was talking to us about mm -hmm. protecting our mental health. And one of the things we need to acknowledge and be aware of is the power of resilience. Yeah, the power of resilience, mm -hmm. the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties, toughness. Uh, the often often remarkable resilience of you know certain organizations the ability to offer uh, substance to ob object to spring back into shape yeah and oh. we're gonna need a whole heap of resilience as we're coming as we're going through the next couple of months isn't it <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. yeah so yeah so um obviously so you was so you was giving us an idea of resilience and when it would be applied and obviously the outcomes of when resilience is not applied um and and we did mm -hmm. ask and you said that you you actually had an example your own personal experience um with this as well right yeah yeah mm -hmm. well i've got a few really but yeah i'm just i will share i'm happy to share um you know at least one mm -hmm. and uh so yeah this is a point of time i was at a university studying and um and at that time, I've never um, experienced bereavement personally, mm -hmm. pers with you know personal bereavement at all in my life, and mm -hmm. and um, and and I had a family member who had passed on, and and really that really hit me mm -hmm. because even though I've had friends who have dealt with that, and I've been quite supportive to them, but for me personally, I wasn't. I didn't know how what that would look like and how I was going to respond if that happened, and mm -hmm. I literally, um, you know, it took me to a place where I was quite, you know, uh, depression. And as far as even, uh, you know, suicidal as well myself, and that was quite of a. I mean, you don't have the tools of how to deal with something. It's just, you know, you're kind of you're trying to find a way of of coping, really. Mm. And um, and but what helped me to to get through that play through that stage was really, um, you know, thankfully I did have, um, you know, obviously my family, uh, friends, and also was able to like speak to my um my tutor who got me in contact with some of the support staff at uni at the time mm. um and i think as well i might have spoken to our gp as well mm. so you know it is about calling on the support that's around you when you realize that you know you're you just you're not coping you cannot you just can't you, you just don't have the tools really to to to, to navigate past this it's, it's a trauma something trauma traumatic that's happened to you yeah i mean it, it that's a that's a really horrible feeling right uh mm -hmm. because a human being is at their best when they feel and um, that they are in control right mm -hmm. when a human being feels mm -hmm. that they're in control of the finances different areas of their life they have mm -hmm. harmony they feel good but the mm -hmm. moment you feel mm -hmm. out of control that's mm -hmm. when it's like the walls start to cave in on you isn't it exactly and, exactly and it can just take one event yeah and before then you know everything was pretty in terms of like life in as a general was good so in, i was in control to, to an extent you know never really been hit by anything too serious like that mm. but um it just showed to show that it can happen to anybody and if you don't have it then this is how the, the impact and how quickly that mm. can all kind of spiral mm -hmm um yeah i actually i can relate to that as well i mean it, i mean r r if for someone who's quite positive but you you know when bereavement occurs depending on how close the person is it, mm. it, it you you're surprised how much it affects you right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because there's there's, there's, a, there's a place where we could be in our life where different things can affect us right but yeah. there's a place where we're like no we've actually worked on ourselves. And, you yeah. know, we can consider ourselves to be quite, yeah, I'm secure. But then when something mm -hmm. like a bereavement hits, it goes really deep. And I and I experienced that myself. I remember, like, mm -hmm. like when my mom passed away, it was, it was, it was very hard. You know, it was very mm -hmm. hard. I didn't know it would hit me so much, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, I, I was confident. I know that she was, uh, she, you know, she did make her, 
resolution with God and everything like that. Uh, but, you know, depending on what was happening in my life at that time, that could have taken me off into a really, really dark place. And not just bereavement as well, but, you know, certain things in life that can disappoint us, you know, yeah. and, and we just feel like we don't have control anymore. Exactly. A loss is a loss, but, you know, it, it's saying whether it be a bereavement or it's a relationship or, you know, work, you know, a job. It, it's, it's, if there's, once there's an attachment there, you're going to feel that element of, um, you know, you might be angry, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, grief, or pain, mm-hmm. all of those kind of mixture of emotions uh, mm-hmm. all at once. Mm-hmm. All at once. Um, but, you know, so that was at that point in, in a time in life. But then sort of like six months after that, um, and actually six months after that, I, I uh, lost two other family members. So quite quickly, oh, wow. I had to learn how to spring back spring back, and that's where resilience, my because by the time, you know, third family member, I dealt with it so much more different from the mm. first one, mm-hmm. you know, um, because it's, it, it's out, of, out of my control, you see, and mm-hmm. life was still going on. Mm-hmm. So somehow in terms of tools, you know, mm-hmm. it's out of my control. I need to look at this as a positive thing, like you just shared as well. Mm-hmm. You know that your beloved has gone on to be with the Lord, so there's comfort and there's peace in that. And that was one of the that was the case for me too. Uh, you know, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and what about workplace? Because sometimes you could be in a high demanding workplace as well. You know, that can really mess a person up as well, where they feel even afraid to go back into work. Hugo, yeah. have you experienced that before? I'm only tr- Actually, you probably have in your, in, in your working life, isn't it? Like even in our wo- even in in the workplace, yeah. we could yeah. actually have a situation where we we're feeling like we could be bombarded with so many different things that we yeah. feel like we've lost control. You know? Yeah. I, I, oh sure, yeah. Isn't it? Uh, we, we definitely, and I yeah. I've had that as well in the workplace, and I've literally actually gone through the motions of not going into work. Mm. I've taken the time out and away from work because of what was happening at work. Yeah. Um, but what, what, you know, on my return, it was important to me to open up, and I was able to do that with uh, a designated member of staff who was there to support me mm-hmm. in my return back to work. But part of that process was me having those conversations about work. And about the issues, about the problem. Okay. You know. So, yeah. you, so you're gonna, so you're gonna give you, so you're just basically gonna summarize, um, mm-hmm. in order to boost our, what's the word, resilience, resilience. right? And resilience, to apply yeah. it, you're gonna summarize. You're gonna give us the keys. You're gonna give us the tools in one mm-hmm. full swoop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go for it, champion. So yeah, first of all, you know, I'd say, um, you know, it's important for you to develop a positive um, self-image and to see things as uh, it's good. Uh, yep. Even though it's you know it has been a bad situation, but you know to think well about yourself, and mm-hmm. in doing so, you can think well about other people as well. Mm-hmm. That's a good way of staying positive. Okay. You know, we've heard of that scenario of um, you know the glass is half full, mm-hmm. that kind of mentality. You know, the resilience people tend to see you know stressful um, events and so on and crises as a, a temporal thing as opposed to a long term thing. All right, so use that as an opportunity for you to grow and to learn um, and. Uh, through you know something that's quite unbearable. Okay, so so uh, see the situation as your chance to grow. So you're you're flipping yeah. a, you're flipping the script instead of being like yeah. I'm a victim. Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. no, this is my chance to grow. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So um, you know, uh, get connected with people. I said that already. You know, this helps you to you know to build your confidence, mm-hmm. uh, build positive relationships with your you know loved ones and friends. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know. They're, they're the ones that's going to help you help to provide the right support for mm-hmm. you during that time, you know, and and, and also outside of that. So, you know, connect with other people, other circles. Uh, maybe it might be a faith community, uh, your faith community, or it might be volunteering for something. Mm-hmm. But again, you're building uh, a different network of support. OK, so connect with other people. That's a huge one. Yeah, so don't yeah. so don't isolate yourself. <laughs> isolate. I said isolate. Right. Okay. <laughs> but, but connect connect to connective people. Yep, gotcha. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um try to uh, make your day meaningful, all right? So um set yourself some goals. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because in doing so it kind of um you know, it helps you when you've achieved that goal for the day, then it's a it's a sense of a com- accomplishment and a purpose 
for that day. Mm-hmm. All right. So set yourself some goals. If you, you know, write it down. I spoke, I spoke about that last week, you know, writing down your goals, make it, making things plain for you. It helps you to uh, execute. And it takes your focus uh, off. It takes your focus from it, like focusing on the program, problem on, in a negative way, isn't it? Precisely, mm. precisely. Yeah, and when you've accomplished it, when you've achieved it for the day, you know, celebrate that. It's a small win. Mm-hmm. You're taking things day by day. It's a small win, but celebrate it, okay? Cool, sounds good, yeah. Um, um, you know, yeah, try to, you know, learning from the, the whole experience in itself. Um, so even looking back, you might, there might be something else in, that you've experienced, another type of uh, hardship, another dilemma that's happened for you. Mm-hmm. How did you, how did you, how did you cope through that? How did you get past that? Mm-hmm. You know, look at those skills, look at what you did then as a uh, strategy to help you in this new thing that you're in. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and get, you know, in a way that you, <clears throat> in looking at it, you can again, write it down because it's helpful to see it in, in front of you. If you journal, if you're somebody that likes to journal, mm-hmm. then obviously you've got that as your account to look into. And if you don't, you're not journaling. It's good to start journaling as well, all right? Because it helps you to identify the positive things that are, and also the negative things that are happening. But it, it helps you to understand your patterns and how you're um, coping with it. It's okay. a guide. Okay, fantastic. So that's number yeah. five, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, five or four. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> yep. Well, maybe. Um, yeah, it's important to to uh, remain hopeful. Um, mm you know that's a key part of being resilient you can't change uh the past it's already happened mm-hmm. uh, but you've, you've always got the future to look look to it's ahead of you mm-hmm. all right so sometimes it is a case of accepting what's happened mm-hmm. um and and you know looking at those changes and how it could be um how can you adapt mm-hmm. past this all right sometimes obviously if you're accept- if, if it's happened already and it's out of your control you can't keep investing your energy into trying to fix it because mm-hmm. that's wasted energy. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, and that, you know, it's not, you're not getting anything out for that. So change, try and change your focus. Mm-hmm. Think about something new, mm-hmm. um, a new challenge. Again, that's going to help to lessen your anxieties and your stress mm-hmm. around the whole event itself. And it will also lift your spirit as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's important that, you know, if you're in your faith, you remember that you've already got the victory mm-hmm. all right in christ we've already got that victory so always kind of use that as your um your baseline you know your foundation mm-hmm. do you know what i mean what has god said to you about about your situation what has god said said to you about you overall you know fantastic um and and you know it's important you know take care take care of yourself so obviously your own needs and your your feelings and your emotions all right is key and it's important and we touched on this last week as well how can we do these things you know look at various activities your hobbies things that you like to like to do and enjoy get back to doing those things you know implement that into your your weekly daily routine um it's important that you're sleeping right you know uh, uh, plenty of sleep your your diet is healthy um you know you're doing things to relax and calm yourself okay uh spending time where you're quiet some people call it meditation mm. you might be doing that through uh prayer your time with god mm-hmm. um focus on your breathing as well nice deep slow calming mm-hmm. uh, uh breathing put on some nice soothing music mm-hmm. um you know all of those things help you because you're taking care of yourself um by when you're doing all of these things I said to you, I went for a walk yesterday and it was amazing. I took pictures. Mm-hmm. You know, that's my thing that I like to do. It helps me to keep calm. Mm-hmm. Um, be, um, you know, proactive. So um, when you're, you know, in part of the resist- re- resilience is is acting, you know, doing something about it. It's not hiding under the covers. It's not closing the doors and the curtains and not answering, the, you know, mm-hmm. ignoring the world. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, facing this problem that you're, it's in front of you, mm-hmm. uh, figuring out what needs to be done, you know, um, make a plan. Uh, who do I need to speak to? Who can help me with this? Um, and reach out to that person. Mm-hmm. You know, these are ways in which you're kind of taking back uh, control of power. Well, <laughs> power exactly over this major setback you know you're not going to allow it to be so you know this traumatic event to kind of dictate 
your future, mm -hmm. right? Um, know that this situation can improve. If you put your, how you manage it now, that's how you could, how you're going to overcome this thing right now. If you do nothing, then you're not overcoming anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, right. Yeah. It talks about writing down the, your experiences, journaling, because that's key. All right. But yeah. Um, and also, sometimes there's a case of um, you might need to speak to somebody more professional as well. And there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. All right. Seeking that professional help. All right. Um, you know, remembering that, uh, you know, overall that with somebody who has that knowledge to help you can pass on this, the key the tools that you need because once somebody ha once you have that then you can use that for any situation moving forward i always say it's important when you learn the, t the the keys the tools that you need then you're able to help yourself and in turn you can help others later on when you've mastered it powerful and you know sometimes you know when you hear the word go and see a specialist a mm. person could interpret it that as i'm gone I'm in, I'm in another level. I, you know, it means like, you know, a straight jacket, you know, with my arms yes, folded yes. backwards because I'm, I'd be, I'm being advised to see a specialist. It's not that. Yeah. It's because we, sometimes we, we don't, you know, we don't, you know, we, we need to unravel ourselves and we need that second voice to help us. Exactly. Yeah, all right. Exactly. And just like a, like a final kind of top tip thing, I just thought, you know, if you think about um, people who are well-known, um, successful, uh, you know, wealthy maybe, you see their countenance is quite humble. And there's a reason for that, do you know what I mean? Because they were, they've started somewhere and they've had to bounce back quite often mm. to get to where they are. So they've built resilience. That's a, you know, an indication of a journey. It's mm. a process. Okay. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. It's a process. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, oh, so there we have it. So, so just remind me, what was the first one? I'm making notes here. What was the first one again? So the first one was to, um, you know, develop a, a positive self-image and, uh, and ah, see things as good. You know? There we go. Excellent. Thank good. you so much for that. So guys, so these are the so these are the tips from the future Ashbourne to build to be resilient to build your resilience. This could be if you're in VYG and you didn't have a good Sunday and everyone's kind of throwing stones at you because you had the least number of youth. <laughs> build resilience if you're in a relationship and you're thinking how am i going to resolve this situation build resilience if for example you have a, a business that you're running and sometimes it feels like you've been crushed on every side because things are not working the way it's still it's supposed to build resilience no mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what it is if you're, you're dealing with children they're like ah, ah, ah build resilience and these are the tips that the feature gave to us today so the first one is develop a positive self image yep yeah? so as soon as things go wrong we tend to start looking throwing daggers at ourselves and looking mm -hmm. at our failures etc no have a develop a positive self image of yourself i am yeah. strong i can do this i can i will put off yeah. number two connect with people speak to someone more professional don't isolate yourself with this problem speak to somebody number three somebody. make your days meaningful so don't go home yeah. and mope and start meditating on the situation focus on it no go out there and go for a walk in the park go out there and throw stones out of bed <laughs> sorry wrong country <laughs> No, like go out there and you know go for a picnic go out there you know what i mean yeah, if you do that in trafalgar square you probably get arrested yeah that's in london all right but you know what i'm saying do something uh meaningful um do spend time with your fam spend time with your friends like on the weekend i, I sat down my my colleague my friend kelson and Sherilyn. they invited me over me and my wife and my family to a, to a meal and it was so lovely it was so nice it was so therapeutic so do something more meaning meaningful uh celebrate your small wins yeah because you are you you are doing many things right so yes. celebrate yeah them, right yeah. uh then afterwards we have journal to learn from your experiences so document mm -hmm. things down learn from your experiences mm -hmm. you never know it could become a future bestseller all yeah. right <laughs> uh be, yeah. hope, be hopeful don't lose hope mm -hmm. yeah be hopeful mm -hmm. that things will get better be hopeful things will change seven change focus onto something new so like uh, she did touch on making goals uh planning still aiming to do stuff let's do it mm -hmm. do this this is necessary even if you are not feeling under pressure i think these things are very necessary right uh keep faith in god uh, what and and think about what God says about you. So what God says about us is, you can do it. I'll have a hope in the future for you. Good things. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Nine. Get back to your hobbies. 
Find time to calm and relax yourself. 10, be proactive. Confront problems and figure out, figure them out. Know the situation that it can improve. Yeah, and if you do nothing, you overcome nothing. All right. It's over. It's over. Um, All right. So, guys, um, I hope you was able to take that down. We're going to try our best. I think we've got JST making notes of these tips, and we should have it on our Facebook page. Just go Robert Ashate or <coughs> Delete. Uh, we'll also link you into Nefisha if you've got any more questions for Nefisha. Uh, but I think that's it. I think we've wrapped it up today. We, 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 we did the we meal have. on time. We did. We did. Yes, that's it. <laughs> All right, guys. And we'd love to hear back from you to know how these tips are for you. So please feel free to mm -hmm. message us at uh, producer at libertyradio.co.uk all right libertyradio.co.uk so we'd love to know your feedback and the tips how they have helped you would love to hear more about it and obviously if there's something more serious you can get through to our 24-hour helpline which is uckg.org just throwing that one out there guys this has been great it's been a phenomenal program jst <laughs> says she's on it okay we're gonna have these tips uh further on to add to your notes if you want to make in case you missed anything but literally we're taking all these things on board so we can apply them and we can be the change that we want to see if we're doing well we keep on building if we're not doing so well we will become even stronger and like nefisha said help someone else nefisha yeah. thank you so much for today Rob, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thank you, listeners, as well. Love it. We love your laughter. We love your giggles. We love your input. <laughs> we love your wisdom. We love your experience. We love everything that you brought for us today. And we look forward that we, have, we can organize to have you back on The Breakfast Show on another occasion because this is our third installment, you know, yeah. and, you know, and you're going to be coming with some other powerful tips to help us all uh, to, to shape our mental health in the right direction for sure for sure awesome oh, you're the best <laughs> all right <laughs>